And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use something called an if statement or an if block in Scratch. Um, and if statements are probably one of the most important things in programming because if statements are when we tell our code to do things, right? And this is like conditional. So you're telling your code, if something happens, do this thing, do this other thing, right? If we looked at a real life example, it's like if Mr. Stanley stubs his toe, he will scream an obscenity or something like that, right? So it's kind of a cause and reaction. Something happens and something happens as a result of that, right? So in this case, if we're thinking it in a base level without programming, our first statement that we would want to tell Scratch is if what? So in a base level, we would say, you know, if the ball hits a paddle, right? That's our first our first comment, right, is if the ball hits a paddle, um, then what happens? What should happen when the ball hits the paddle? We want to code this and we want to tell Scratch if while this ball is moving, it hits the paddle, it should turn around and change directions and go in the other direction. Scratch over here on the control, we have this comment that says if that I'm going to drag in here right now, right? I'm going to zoom in on this just so you guys can see what I'm doing a little better, right? So the way this works is it says, if blank, then something happens, right? Um, so if what? If the ball touches the paddle. Um, how do we find that out? Uh, you'll notice that in Scratch, uh, in, in our if statement here, we have a slightly different, like a diamond shape, right? And that's basically telling us that this is using an operator of some sort, right? So we need to say if, in this case, uh, the ball is touching the paddle. And we can see that by going to sensing, right? Also, it's important to note that I, I am on the ball sprite right now. That's where we're putting the code because it's the ball that's actually colliding with things. So we want to be programming on the ball itself. You don't want to write a code on the paddle that says, if like you could technically do this, but it would be inefficient to say, if the ball hits me, bounce the ball in the other direction, but that's silly, right? So if uh, we click on sensing here, you'll notice that we have a lot of these diamond shaped blocks that we can use. And literally the very first one says is, uh, or it doesn't say, it says touching mouse pointer, question mark, right? But um, if you click on that drop down here, you'll see it gives us a list of the edge, which is important, but it also lets us do left paddle and right paddle, which are our sprites, right? Um, so I'm going to drag this in here and I'm going to drag it like this. And I'm going to say if touching the right paddle, because right now our ball is shooting to the right, so we should have it if it touches the right paddle. Cool. Then what happens? So the way an if statement works is if this, this is our conditional statement, whatever we put in like between like in this slot right here, that's what it's going to do if this shows up as true. So if this is touching the paddle, anything we put right here is going to happen. So what should we have happen, right? We're just going to have the ball turn. Um, so if I go here, I'm going to just say turn 15 degrees. Um, we are just... Um, testing this right now, we want to make sure it works. And we want it to go in the opposite direction. So how many degrees should that be? 180 degrees. So we're going to say, if this is touching the right paddle, um, the ball is going to turn 180 degrees. Boop, boop. Yay, right? So now here comes the question, where do we put this? Where we want to put this, we don't want to do something like this. Um, like that, right? Because that's silly. And again, it's only evaluating once. Um, and it would also cause a bunch of issues with our code when we have a bunch of stuff like this, right? So what we want to do with an if statement like this is we want to put it in our forever loop. Because this is essentially going to turn into our, our balls game logic. Oh, believe me, Cameron, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I see you shaking your head like, no, and yes. Um, so because this, when this flag is clicked, is essentially going to turn into the artificial intelligence for our ball, right? So we want this stuff to be evaluating forever, right? No matter what, we want this to happen unless our game just stops. Um, so now this is telling us um, when, um, what is it, uh, forever, it's in a forever loop, the ball's always going to be moving 10 steps. And if it touches the right paddle, it's going to flip and turn 180 degrees. Beautiful. Right? If I hit green now, we're going to get this. Yeah. Sick. And now we're starting to get interactions here. 
right? Which is cool, because now this is something that we can build on to start doing more, right? Um, what is our, we still have problems though, like what? So your code should look like this, right? Um, so I have forever, move 10 steps, and then I have an if statement touching, if touching right paddle turns 180 degrees, I have another if statement directly under this one, if touching left paddle turn 180 degrees, right? Now, question, um, why would I not want to do something like this? Like put this if statement right now inside this one. So there are scenarios where we put if statements inside of other if statements. That's like totally valid. And there's also a thing called an if else that we'll get into. But in this scenario, if I put this like this, what's going to happen is we're asking scratch or we're saying, the scratch is basically saying, or the ball is saying, if I am touching the right paddle, turn 180 degrees. And while I am touching the right paddle, if I am also touching the left paddle, also turn 180 degrees. And that's impossible, right? Um, so this is why we dump these outside of each other like this. Um, so cool. We can tell scratch instead of um, going 180 degrees, we can just tell it to pick a random number. Right. So what I if what you can do is over here on the operators, um, you'll which is the green one. You'll see a a circular thing here that says pick random one to ten, and this is something that we can use. You can drop this in anywhere um, where a number would go in Scratch. So you can even put it like we could technically have the ball move like a random amount of steps. So it would change speeds as it was going, which would be probably horrific and not feel very good to play. Right. Uh, you could also have something like the ball starts in a random position or the paddles start in a random position, which would also be horrific. Right. Um, so you can use this to just generate a lot of different random numbers, which is useful. Um, so all we have to do to use this is dump it in here. Right now, um, what do we want to do for degrees? 200 to 160 degrees, I think. Um, and I'm going to do 200 and 160, and then I'm going to run our game and see what happens. Uh, okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, it hits the edge and gets stuck. We didn't account for that. Um, ah, darn. Okay, you know what? That's like a, a pretty good range right now. Um, so you can see that when our ball is bouncing, oh, um, when our ball is bouncing back and forth, it's actually like a pretty good, um, it's giving us a good angle every time and we're not getting any like terrible bounces, um, where it's like going off into like clipping through the, uh, like clipping through anything. It does get stuck on the edges and then it slides along the edges, which is kind of silly. Um, but but that's pretty good. Yo, good suggestion, bud.